everyone. My name is Chrissy Hughes and I'm a life skills and deployment educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to provide you a little bit of a brief of what we would give for a typical pre-deployment brief um, here in San Diego. Um, I'm going to just cover this brief in a few um, segments to complete the whole brief um, just for uh, for our technology purposes here at the office. Um, so this is our typical pre-deployment brief that we would have at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. Um, I'm, today I'm gonna cover several of the objective, objectives. I'm gonna cover the deployment top 10 and the emotional cycles of deployment. In the next section, I'll cover the rest um, of the objectives. Now, these videos are meant to be used in conjunction with the current climate with the COVID-19 crisis. So I realize that some of the things we might be talking about um, might be very difficult during this phase in your life. And I just want to say that we're all learning in this process. This can be a very stressful time for most people. Um, I myself am learning um, how to work, how to have three kids who aren't in school, um, how to have a spouse that's gone um, and is very needed in his work situation right now. Um, but the top 10 is kind of what we want families um, and sing sailors to make sure that they are covering, to make sure that they feel ready for a deployment. Okay, um, so our deployment top 10 checklist, we're also gonna provide this in a PDF handout that you can print out and have available. We wanna make sure our ID cards are up to date. It can be very difficult to uh, access the things that you need and that family members need if your ID cards are not up to date. Um, so if your local ID lab is not open, um, call around to see if you can find another one that is or make sure that you have someone that can sign to make sure that you have a, a way to update those ID cards. Now, ombudsman information. Now, I'm looking at you for a second, those single sailors out there. Who is the ombudsman? The ombudsman is basically a liaison between the command and the families. Now, you as service members, you're going to need to let the ombudsman know who they can and who they cannot speak to while you are away on deployment. The same goes um, for your family members. They need to know that they can call an ombudsman if they have an issue. So me as a, as a spouse, I might be wondering what's going on with communication. I might be wondering if there's gonna be a port visit. I might be wondering when the next time I can hear from my service member is or when they're coming home. The ombudsman is a good contact information um, for your family members and for the um, active duty. The next one we have down here is the spending plan. Um, many times sailors are bringing in more money when they are on deployment. Thinking about the best use of all of that extra income is a good thing for us to think about ahead of a deployment. The next one is a power of attorney. Now your local JAG office might have limited hours or may not be working um, during this uh, current COVID-19 crisis that we have going on. Maybe your local legal person could uh, get a power of attorney for you, but powers of attorney are very, very important so that family members have a way to act on your behalf while in your absence. Um, we like to suggest mainly um, that we don't get a general power of attorney, that we have a specific power of attorney. For example, I as a spouse was able to use this to access bank account information or change our utilities when I had um, my spouse was away on deployment. This is very important. Um, the last one is your passport information. You wanna make sure that you can and need to travel when you are out on a deployment. Make sure that's up to date. Your page two and your deers. We have a lot of horror stories here at Fleeting Family, um, but your deers and your page two are something that you as active duty service members make, need to make sure are up to date. We can tell you horror stories about spouses getting SGLI, um, ex-wives getting SGLI um, when they didn't intend for them to, but make sure that is up to date. Your will is also something you'll want to make sure that you have available. Not everyone needs a will, um, but people that want assets to go to someone specifically um, will need a will. That's a good question for your legal men or for your JAG. Um, the next one is making sure you have an updated family care plan. People who have dependents are mostly the ones who need family care plan. Um, sailors full mailing address and then your um, communication plan. I'll talk about that in another video a little bit later. The next thing that I want to show you too is just to make sure that we have checklists that are specific to single service members, to couples, and parents as well. And the last thing I want to kind of cover before we go on for our next video is just talking about the emotional cycles of deployment. 
Now, the emotional cycles of deployment are research-based evidence to show what happens when we are generally getting ready for a separation and during that separation. Now, I have a personal story I like to tell along with this, and I'll keep it short. Um, so I'm a spouse, I'm married to an active duty service member. Um, I noticed that I had a ritual when I would have my active duty service member leave for a period of time. It could be a short period of time, it could be an entire deployment, um, but I would go and I would change things around the house after um, he left. The bathroom counter was kind of where we would go and change things um, the most frequently. So my spouse likes to set things up kind of like a desk. Like I'm going to grab my shaving cream, I'm going to grab my toothbrush, everything is right at an arm's reach. For me it's clutter, I don't like to see it, but I noticed that this was something that I always wanted to move after he left. So we'd go in, take a box, clear it all off, put all of that those items into a box and put it underneath the sink. Um, I didn't like the clutter, but I realized later that there was an emotional reason for that. And it was because when I woke up in the morning, I wanted to have the ability to focus on something else other than the absence of my active duty service member. So having a clear bathroom counter meant when I woke up in the morning that I could focus on the things I needed to do for that day. I could focus on getting ready, taking care of my children, doing what I needed to do at work, accomplish tasks that needed to happen. And that was a way of me going through the stage of detachment and withdrawal, all right? Um, if I don't see it, if it's not in my mind's eye, then I can go and move about my day and refocus my attention. Um, so I'm gonna cover this a little bit more in some of the later briefs, but it's important to know where you are in this emotional cycles of deployment and what's coming next. And unfortunately, families don't move through these step by step. It would be nice if me and my spouse moved through stage one, then went through stage two, and then went through stage three, but it doesn't always happen that way. All right, I will see you all in another video portion for this pre-deployment, but I wanted to provide my contact information if this is all you're getting today. Um, my name is Chrissy Hughes. This is the best way to contact me. This is my email address and that I am a life skills and deployment educator, okay? So Chrissy, christina.d.hughes.ctr at navy.mil. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys stay safe out there. We're sending our love and hope to see you all very soon. Bye.